For the last 7 days I was looking for a ship that I was quite familiar with. I looked at various battle cruisers, I looked at various cruisers and various faction cruisers and in the end I have decided to go with the Ortus. After all I used this ship in EVE Echoes for about 2 years now and it is one of my most successful ships to date and well I have decided to go and fly this ship in EVE Online as well. And I can tell you, it is a fantastic choice so far, I really love this ship and I'm very happy that I have the chance to fly it in this game as well. So, uh, before actually buying the Ortus, I did look at the other faction cruisers, I think I looked at the Cinnabel, I looked at the Hecat as well, but uh, didn't really uh, have the skills for it yet. The Cinnabel, 319 million, I have the skills for it. Although uh, I didn't really uh, want to fly the Cinnabel just yet. The goal for the Ortus was to be a overall PvE and in some cases a PvP ship. And since I already have a lot of experience with the Ortus, it just did feel like the right choice. The Ashmu is also a fantastic choice, although uh, the Ashmu, I think I still have to finish with some skills. Oh, well, I have all skills for the Ashmu. The Ashmu is still on, of my, on, of, on, on my list to fly, so the Ashmu will be uh, probably the next one of the next ships that I will fly in this game. It's overall a fantastic little ship. And I also looked at the Vigilant. However, for the Vigilant I need to skill the Railgun skills and currently I don't have them, but the Vigilant is also a fantastic little boat that I love to fly. The Stratios is on the list as well. The Stratios is a exploration cruiser, it will be very important for wormholes and the Stratios is on my list as well. But the first ship is going to be the Ortus. I have a very special place for this ship and I just had to, had to buy it first. And I'm very, very happy to uh, be flying it. So let's take a look at the ship info, at the ship characteristics. Overall it will be very similar to the EVE Echoes Ortus. Medium, primarily fitted with medium modules. Missiles, guided weapon systems with delayed impact and broad selection of damage types. Attack, holes with good damage and mobility, recommended for hit and run and pursue tactics. Tackling, holes capable of pinning the enemy down, recommended to prevent the target from escaping. And the Ortus is a shield tank, very important, don't armor tank the Ortus in this game, it's not going to work. The Galante Cruiser bonus per level, will give you 10% bonus to warps, Kramer and warp disruptor maximum range. Caldery Cruiser bonus per level, will give 15% bonus to missile damage. Raw bonus, plus 200% bonus to missile velocity and 50% penalty to missile flight time. So the Ortus can use all missiles, uh, I will mostly use the Ortus with the rapid light missile launchers. Attributes, structure hit points, 2100 hit points, capacity 300, drone bay 25, drone bandwidth 25 megabit per second, mass 9.3 million kilograms, volume 101,000 or 10,000 if packaged, Inertia modifier 0 0.384. Now the hull resistance, it should be 33% on all damage types, 33 EM, 33 thermal, 33 kinetic and 33 explosive. On to the armor, it has 2200 hit points, the EM Resistance is 50%, Thermal 45%, Kinetic 25% and Explosive 10%. Let's go on to the Shield. Shield capacity is 2950. Shield recharge time is 20 minutes and 50 seconds. Shield resistance 0% on EM, 20% on Thermal, 40% on Kinetic and 50% on Explosive. There is no electronic resistance on this ship. The capacitor is 1550 gigajoules, the recharge time is 8 minutes and 10 seconds. Maximum target range 50 kilometers, it can lock 7 targets. The signature radius is 135 meters, the scan resolution is 300 millimeters. 
sender strength is 21 points, that's the gravitometric sender strength. 230 meters per second is the max velocity, and 4 astronomical units per second is the warp speed. CPU is 450 teraflops, the power grid is 800 megawatts, calibration 265 points out of 300 points, the Ortus has 5 missile slots and 1 utility slots, overall 6 high slots. The Ortus has 5 medium slots, 4 low slots and 3 medium rig slots. And on to the requirements. Here you can take a look at the required skills, you need Galanta skills, you need Caldera skills. Basically this is a hybrid ship between the two races and uh, you need both skills in order to get this boat up and running. It's very easy to skill into these ships, which is very nice, always a bonus. And the Ortus costs about 553 million in my region. On the normal ETA market, the ship goes for about 400. 309 million isk is for a Ortus haul in ETA. Overall, not a very expensive ship in this game. And I'm on to the build. So. This is a build that I have seen a long time ago, and I based the Eve Echoes Ortus build on this build. So, this is more of a PvP oriented build, with the Rapid Light Missile Launchers. They have a 40, they have 47 km range, they, their damage application is good on small ships, good on big ships. The utility slot is a neutralizer, although you can use a Nosferatu or even uh, the Probe Launcher. One large extender, multi-phase shield spectrum, large ancillary shield booster, one scrambler, and one micro warp drive. In the low slots, I have a damage control and triple ballistic control systems. As for the rigs, one EM shield enforcer, medium core defense field extender, and one medium processor overclocking unit. When I click on simulate the, the fit, the resistance is 58, 51, 63 and 70. 57.50 km is the targeting distance. The ship goes 1.9 km per second, which honestly it's not that slow, it's fairly quick. When I overheat the module, it's 2.7 km per second. Very good when you have to quickly approach a target, actually really solid speed for a cruiser. I like the Mordu ship's speed. The drones, well I have a bunch of drones, but the drone DPS is not going to be that important for this ship. You can also overheat the multi-phase shield spectrum, that can increase your resistance by a little bit. The ancillary repairs about 429 hit points every 3.4 seconds. Now this module uses the capacitor batteries, and uh, as long as you have the capacitor batteries, your main capacitor is not going to be used, but when the capacitor batteries run out, you will be uh, basically forced to use the, the ship's capacitor for the booster. Overall, a very interesting little module, and uh, it does help a lot uh, with, the, with the capacitor on this ship, because the Ortus doesn't have the best capacitor, and a module like this will uh, maintain the ship's shield for as long as possible. And here you can take a look at the attributes of the module, here are the necessary skills, shield operation and power management, overall very easy to skill into. And you can overheat the module as well in critical situations. Basically most of the modules, most of the active modules can be overheated, you can also overheat the scrambler for a long range, you can overheat the missiles, which will increase the DPS, but uh, make sure that you don't burn the modules, so uh, overheat only when necessary again in critical situations. And the neutralizer, when you overheat the neutralizer, the cycle time gets decreased a little bit, but it does consume about the same amount of, of capacitor. I have the neutralizer because I did not know what to place else there, but again I guess I can place the probe launcher for high sec, even low sec exploration. Basically for combat sites, I got the ship primarily for, for that purpose, it's a very scary little boat. Now let me quickly go and see if I have an afterburner here, so since this is more of a 
PvP oriented build. Uh, for PvE, you would like to have an afterburner for a speed tank. Now, the orders with an afterburner can work, although uh, only I would use only the afterburn orders in high sec missions, basically, or the exploration combat sites. It's fairly fast with the afterburner, overheated air 97 meters per second. The class, the default speed is 690.4 meters per second. Now, with this kind of build, uh, I would also like to extend the missile range in PvE. I would like to have some uh, nice range on this ship. And with, rapid, with the light rapid missile launchers, you can get about 60 km range if you have the missile guidance computers and system is installed. So let me quickly grab the modules from the Bellicos. I think they are in the Bellicos. Yes, they are. Okay. Let me pull out the script and let me pull out the the module itself and I'll fit the module in the Ortus and then we will take a look at the ship's performance then. It should drastically improve the range. You can also improve the yeah, missile application but the Ortus already has a really good missile damage application so uh, we don't really have to go for that but if you uh, like to improve the missile damage application you can do that. Although keep in mind the Ortus has some of the best missile parameters and missile stats out of any ship in uh, in the game. Of course there are some other ships that, that are very that are very good as well, but the Ortus missiles are really nice as well. Now I'll, I'll take out the scrambler and I'll just add the missile guidance computer and this will uh, also work with the script that increases range. Right now the range is 51 kilometer, the flight range is 51 kilometer and when I add the script, hold a second, for some reason it doesn't wanna go in, okay now it works. When I add the script it's 47 and when the module is active, 55 kilometers, so it added about 4 kilometers, so it's not bad. 55 kilometers with the rapid light missile launchers is not bad. Now you can extend the range even more and for that I'll just look at the missile guidance extension, it's not it's not in my hangar for some reason, although I had a bunch of these modules. Sometimes the module just vanishes from my from my station, not really sure how that happens. And a random tier 2 rig that I wasn't able to slap in the ship, so it just sits in the hangar here. Might sell it or might use it for a different ship. Okay, well, let's keep on simulating the build. I'll just go and search for, uh, for the necessary module, it will not take too much time. So basically my goal here is to extend the missile range as much as possible. And for that I have to go in the um, turrets and launchers I believe, although let me just double check if I if I have the right idea here. I think I have the right idea, although there's a lot of modules here and it's easy to get lost too, so uh, my apologies if I do sound and look a little bit lost. But I'm not lost, I, I think, I, I hope I'm not lost, but let's see here, missile guidance computers, enhancers, this is what I'm looking for, the computer is the medium slot module. Okay, yes, this. Well, the enhancer is the low slot module, and yes, it is. Okay, so let's have some fun with the um, with the build here. Oh, hold a second, I have to remove the damage control first, and I can't just slap the module over. I have to remove it manually, unfortunately. Okay, this will work. And now let me slap the. Let's unfit the module, and now let's slap the missile guidance enhancer. And now the range is 60 kilometers, so it, it added about plus 5 extra kilometers. And now the rapid light missile launchers have a 60 kilometer range. A build that I would personally use for exploration, for combat exploration, for, for combat sites that we like to do. This ship basically uh, came from the combat sites, sponsored by exploration in high sec, by the way. <laughs> that's, how, uh, that's how nice the exploration runs were lately. Okay, well, 60 kilometers, I think it's it's pretty nice. Although you can extend that range even more if you change the rigs and if you use better modules and if you have better skills, of course, the range will be even more. When the computer is overheated, 61 kilometer range, which is also very nice. Okay, so let's take a look at how the heavy missiles will work now. My preferred choice of weapon on this ship is going to be are going to be the rapid light missile launchers. However, you can also use the heavy missile launchers. 
they also work really well and let's let's take a look at how much performance how much range i can get from from the heavy missile launchers they have a long range but shorter uh, but a very long rate of fire or activation time very long activation time and their damage application is not going to be that good against small ships but you know they will still apply some damage to it after all damage application in this game for missiles is really nice and let me slap some missiles i usually go with the kinetic ones although explosive em or, or thermal missiles are also very nice it depends on the target that you are shooting at some missiles are going to be more effective against some targets it all depends on the hole that they have in their resistance 91 kilometer missile range not bad not bad now the thing with uh with this nice range is i only have 57.50 kilometer lock range so this range is basically useless uh, since I can't really lock targets at that distance. So, uh, I can easily fix that. I just need to go and find a sensor booster and that should enhance the range by a lot. I expect about 75 km range with the sensor booster. Let's add a sensor booster to the ship. Let's unfit the ancillary, ancillary booster because now the, the ship would be uh, a pure kite build so long range only 74.75 kilometer well not quite 75 but close and of course I can add a script on the sensor boost that can enhance the range even more so uh, targeting range scripts is installed and now 92 kilometer locking range which is fantastic and this also is combined with 91 kilometer missile flight range I would say a very balanced build, well 89 km because the module was overheated, so about 90 km, 89 km missile range with the, with the heavy missiles. And that leaves us with the heavy assault missiles, they should have the best DPS, although very short range and their damage application is not going to be that good against small targets, but they should wreck cruisers and they should wreck battle cruisers and above. So let me go and add some heavy, uh, heavy missile launchers, heavy assault missile launchers five high slots because the sixth slot is a utility slot a launch intent to use for cruiser class spacecraft okay sheer damage dealing capability they have shorter range and a much faster rate of fire and i'll add the heavy assault missile they use different ammo so don't be confused okay let's add the missiles and the dps is uh, of course higher the range on these missiles is shorter 29 km range you can overheat them which will enhance the dps even more 29 km is the maximum flight range which honestly actually is not that short it's it's really good uh, i'm very happy with the with the dps with the range on these heavy assault missiles very interesting so there is a lot of uh, options that you can choose uh, with with this little boat and of course with uh, a close range build you don't need 92 kilometer range basically with this build i would return the ancillary shield booster and i would return the the capacitor batteries or the capacitor boosters in the car hold basically uh, this build would work with the previous build just fine after all it would be a close to mid-range ship well then uh the ortus is a, it's a fantastic little boat i really like it and in this game it seems to be as little as in eve echoes so since i'm quite familiar with the ship let's undock and uh, let's have some fun with it so uh I'm, i undocked with the pvp build because well did not really have enough time to change the build again and we have one the outpost anomaly combat a combat site we used to run the combat sites with very cheap cruisers and I think I'll probably continue to run them with cheap cruisers because it's just hilarious to, uh, to watch faction cruisers fail uh, to run the anomaly. And I think we have one faction cruiser inside, I think it's a Gila. I actually feel back in my element when I, uh, when I fly a familiar ship. I feel much happier with the Ortus actually. I really love the ship. Uh, it's it's ridiculous now i have the 
thermal and EM missiles installed because I forgot to reload the the missile stock that I have in the station. So yeah, uh, one thing that I still have to get used to is uh, reloading the ammunition. Now the micro warp drift can be used while running the sights, although it will definitely eat the capacitor, so an afterburner is much more preferred. Now there is the Gila. The Gila seems to be face tanking all of the ships. Now face tanking, you know, it can work, although in this game it's a little bit different and you have to be very careful what you're doing because the NPC ships in this game are no joke. And that's why I will proceed with caution, that means a long-range kite orbit and in the classic fashion I will eliminate the smaller ships first and then I'll proceed towards the big ones. Basically I shoot whatever it is closest to me, currently shooting at the, at the Brutix over there. Where is the Gila? Well, there's a chance that the Gila has died. If the Gila has died, well, furry loot. Although, not really sure how that will work. Perhaps he will become red and the player can kill us. I know if you steal someone's wreck or loot, basically, uh, the, the player can actually kill you because you become red, which is a very nice feature. Well, now the site is 100% ours. I don't see the Gila's wreck anywhere. I think the Gila has warped out. There is no no points. I hope there's no points actually. Yeah, they don't have any scramblers here. The anomaly only uses ships that use dampeners. And I think in Serpentis space Having a sensor booster is actually a very smart idea, especially with uh, so many dampeners that can be dropped on your ship. I know in some anomalies uh, when all the rats just focus me, uh, I basically can't lock anything. If you are if you're a long range ship, long range build, uh, then that might be a problem, so a sensor booster is definitely a very smart idea for the anomalies. Now, this is uh, for high sec. For low sec, I would probably use a PvP build because in low sec you can get jumped. Basically, you know, low sec is a little wild in this game, so you have to be very careful what you're doing there. You can get jumped on the gate, you can get jumped on the station, you can get jumped anywhere. And I find that quite hilarious and very interesting. High sec is no different, by the way. You can get killed here as well, so you can get killed anywhere. Okay, those little ships are getting a little bit too close. Now one thing that I don't like with uh, with the light rapid missile launchers, or well, with light missiles in general, is the very long reload that they have. The normal heavy missiles have a 10 second reload, uh, these missiles have a 35 second reload. So uh, you go through the missiles very fast, they deplete uh, their their capacity extremely quickly, and it takes a while to reload. So that's one thing that is not really good with the with these missiles. However, the application, the damage and the DPS is pretty solid. The only drawback is the fact that the reload takes a year to complete and they do go through your missiles in the car hold extremely quickly. So you always have to make sure that you carry enough ammunition each time you undock, especially if you plan to play for a, for a long period of time, uh, you will go through the missiles very quickly and make sure that you have enough missiles or at least make sure that you reload on time. You don't want to run out of missiles mid-fight. That's probably going to end up very badly for the ship. So far it hasn't happened to me. Uh, I haven't run out of ammo. Actually, I think I ran out of one missile type once. And that caught me by surprise, so I had to reload, but I had other missiles as backup. So I always carry a bunch of missiles in my car hold, uh, just in case, uh, if I forget to reload, so I have other missiles that I will use. But usually, I try to 
I use the damage type that's going to make the most damage on the target. Basically, you shoot the target on the resistance holes. That way, you do maximum damage and you can achieve the faster clear time. Although, here it's not really important to clear fast, it is important to clear the mission. If you warp out from the site, the site basically will shut down and uh, you don't have another option to enter unless you have a backup key. Now the key here is located in the red box there, basically the key for the next room. And I think my friend is already going towards the box, okay. Now when we talk about the piñata that is uh, referring to the Overseer Battleship that is in the next room, the Overseer Battleship is basically the main boss of this combat site. And we have done about 10 of these sites so far, I think it were 10, a bunch of them. And so far it's one of our favorite sites, but I have to admit we made a very decent amount of ISK with the stores running, uh, again, combat sites. Combat sites in this game are extremely fun and you don't really have to have a fancy ship to do them. Uh, again, we did the first uh, few outposts with basically ghetto cruisers with a bellicose and with a vaxor extremely cheap with the basic uh, basic skills, literally alpha clones, both of us and uh, with very 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 cheap modules. So it doesn't really matter what kind of modules we have, it is important that you know how to approach the mission. Now, don't go right in the blob of the enemy ships, they, they will kill you, they have enough DPS to kill your ship, even if you're tanked. The way how we approach this is by kiting and maintaining range. Basically, shoot the small targets, then the, then the big targets. Now, in my case here, since I have the, I have the Ortus here, uh, I am mostly built for both at the moment, but in most cases, if we run the, this, uh, this anomaly, the Fial post, I go with the heavy missile launchers because my goal is to kill the big targets, my friend's goal is to eliminate the small targets. That way we can maximize the speed at which we clear everything. But since I have the um, light missiles currently, it means I can shoot all targets, although my targets here are going to be the cruisers, battle cruisers, and in the end my target will be the battleship that is creeping up there on the field below all the ships. You can see the battleship icon over there. That's the that's the main boss. Now the battleship is quite tanky and that battleship is using a micro warbreath. It goes about uh, 700 meters per second so if you are using an afterburner for this site make sure that your ship goes above 750 meters per second. That way you can maintain a distance away from the overseer battleship. You don't want to get close to that thing, it has DPS and it can kill you. So in this case uh, long range is the way to go and well of course of course they decide to light me up on fire first after all I have the lower standing here and it's also important to know that the rats will shoot the player with the lower standing first and then they go towards the other players or they shoot the, the ship that represents higher threat. Basically if you are in a expensive ship there is more chance that they will shoot at the expensive ship so also be careful about that. And also, uh, before I forget, uh, make sure that you don't get stuck in the structure. One of my nightmares is actually getting stuck in a structure while the ships are eating me, so uh, yeah, don't get stuck and make sure that you are flying in, a, in such a way that those ships don't get you stuck. And in such a way that you can always warp out if necessary. If you have to save your ship, save your ship, don't don't lose the ship uh, if you can avoid the loss, even if it costs losing a anomaly. Okay, well so far they are not doing any damage to me, I tested out the ancillary shield booster, it does seem to boost shield nicely. I have a lot of shields, although I wish that I had 10,000 shield, but I think 7.6,000 is also pretty nice. After all, have to consider my skills here, not not the highest of the highest skills, but but it's enough for the for the for the game, it's enough to enjoy the game. They are shooting me on kinetic, the main damage type in this combat site will be 
thermal and kinetic. I think I have decent thermal and kinetic resistance. At the moment, it seems like they are shooting me with with kinetic ammo, with kinetic missiles, which is fine. I don't take a lot of damage. This ship has a lot more shield than the Bellicos. However, the shield is the the only thing that's preventing this ship from from popping in one hit. Just like any other Caldari ship, the Mordo ships are shield tanks and once they lose the shield, the ship is seconds away from exploding. So make sure that your shield is always in tip-top condition. There is the Bella ship. Yeah, it, that thing is rolling straight for me. The Piñata... Yeah, the Piñata, Piñata coming is referring to the Bella ship. And I got stuck in the reload, of course. Now, here I am in a bad position. Uh, I kind of uh, flew off course, did not intend to fly uh, at the right side of the grid from the station. Usually we fly close to each other so that we can support each other, but in this case I messed up and I'm taking the battleship with me for a little ride. The battleship seems to want some Ortus and, well, if the battleship wants some Ortus, well, it will get some Ortus. It will get its missiles first. I will run one cycle with the micro warp drive, just to maintain the distance. I don't want that thing anywhere close to me. After all, a long range build relies on the range, so don't let anything get close to you. My orbit is at 40 kilometers. Uh, the How fast did that thing go? It, it was going 700 meters per second for a moment. So yeah, uh, if you're using an afterburner, make sure that you go really quickly, that you go very fast, because that thing is going to rush you and you don't want that thing anywhere near your ship even if you're tanky always maintain a distance i don't know if it has webs or scrammers i always assume that it has so just because of that i am going to maintain the distance now the capacitor definitely can be improved and uh, I can see that there is a lot of room for improvement on the capacitor in this ship. Now the main reason why the capacitor is, uh, is, is a little bit unstable is because of the micro warp drive. If we, with an afterburner the capacitor will definitely be a lot more stable, after all the afterburner doesn't have the capacitor penalty, the, the micro warp drive does reduce your overall capacitor volume, the afterburner doesn't, so the afterburner is definitely the way to go for PVE. And in order to enhance the capacitor you can also add some capacitor rigs, some capacitor modules, after all you have a lot of slots to play around with this ship and you can easily come up with uh, a lot of very interesting options. This build is just one of many builds that uh, I will show you with time. I'll show you some of the capacitor builds as well at one point where the ship's capacitor is going to be stable. Although the capacitor is mostly uh, there to keep the after the to keep the micro object or afterburn running the shield booster is being maintained by the capacitor batteries, they after all have the ancillary shield booster. You can technically also make a passive shield tank, uh, passive shield re regeneration is very really good in this game, so uh, you can easily uh, do that. And it's also one of the ways how you can build a long range kite, with a passive shield regeneration build. Although my first ever build in Eve Echoes for the Ortus was a active shield tank, basically very similar to this build, extremely similar because I was uh, basically inspired by this build that I have seen a long time ago online when I was uh, actually looking on builds for inspiration for the Ortus, uh, I stumbled upon this build and I replicated that build in Eve Echoes in a way, and now uh, here I am, two years later, back in Eve Online with the same build. Very interesting how, uh, how things go. Now here I had the idea to uh, actually take distance and my friends to uh, warp to me so that we can kill the ship easier, but it turns out you can't warp inside of the mission, you can't warp to your teammate, you can't warp to the wreck, basically you can only use the mic warp drift to move around or the afterburn or basically the default ship thrusters, so uh, yeah, I, I wasted a little bit of capacity there, but now back uh, at the Back at the default uh, tactic, keep the angry battleship at range 
and send missiles flying. Use the microwave one cycle just to take range and then turn off the microwave so that the capacitor is going to be running as long as possible. Now, you don't have to use the ancillary shield booster the second you take damage. You can let the ship take some shield damage and then after you take about, I don't know, 40 50% shield damage, then you can boost the shield back up to 100%. But I just, I'm just testing out to see uh, how the module behaves, how the module works, and testing out how the reload feels. The reload is 60 seconds, which honestly is a long time, but I think it's not too bad if you, if you consider the fact that it's not going to kill your capacitor, so uh, I can live with the 60, six, with the 60 seconds uh, reload on the ancillary shield booster. Bounty 2.5 million, here you can take a look at the resistance. So EM and thermal on hole, well I guess I have those missiles so the hole on the battleship will take the most damage. I forgot to reload a lot of other missiles so, so yeah, uh, that's why I'm using those two missiles. Not really the best to shoot at on armor but you know, it's better than nothing so I'm going to keep using the missiles. The reload is finishing up on the ancillary ship booster, the rapid missiles are... I call them, yeah, they are, they are rapid missiles. Uh, by the way, the light rapid missiles in this game are the equivalent of the rapid missiles in EVE Echoes, basically the medium missiles. The heavy missiles are the equivalent of the normal medium missiles and the heavy assault missiles are the torpedo launchers in EVE Echoes. I don't like that they changed the name, the names of the missiles. It makes things so much more confusing. But you know, once you get used to it, uh, you actually realize that's a, that's it's about the same module that, that we're talking about the same missile launcher here. In any case, uh, next, the next missiles are being launched into the battleship. The battleship is now into into armor, into low armor. I'm basically doing a one v one here while my friend is dealing with the with the battle cruisers. So far it runs fairly smooth. I'm a little bit annoyed that I didn't get the heavy missiles. With the heavy missiles I would be doing much more damage, the reload would be much more forgiving and I would be able to kill that battleship much faster, but you know, it is what it is and I just have to keep using the modules that I have installed. Basically, uh, we have to be very quick when we find these sites because players like to run them and we have to ensure that we get inside and we have to ensure that we get the set only for ourselves that way. That way we have been making ISK for, uh, for some time now. And what does it feel like to jump from the Bellicos to the Ortus? Now, I'll, I'll be honest here, I think I shouldn't really, uh, I shouldn't have jumped so soon on this ship. Uh, I should have probably get a Caracal or Caracal Navy. I think I'll get a Caracal or Caracal Navy because it's a lot cheaper to run and it's it does feel to be uh, very similar in performance. Although the Ortus uh, is called the uh, Super Caracal here, and uh, again the Caracal is much cheaper to lose, so perhaps I might go buy the Caracal Navy just to fly it and just to have fun with it. Uh, after all, my internet connection and my computer not the best. So uh, if it happens that my computer breaks down or if it happens that my internet dies, I'd rather lose a Caracal Navy than losing an Ortus. Let's be real here. So uh, I bought this ship because I love it. I will use it, I will fight and I'll have fun with it. But I'll also use the Caracal Navy when I feel like my computer will probably break down or when I feel like my internet will also uh, break down, which both happened by the way. Both happened very, very recently. So uh, just to avoid some some disgusting loss by accident or you know uh, there are some things that just you can affect on and you know it happens and your ship can pop so uh, just for that just just in that when I feel when I get that sixth sense feeling I'll uh, go and uh, fly the Karak Navy or Karak both by the way fantastic ships now I've seen uh, players argue basically the Drake versus the Ortus. Which one is actually better? Now in the in DPS I think they're about the same. The Drake is much cheaper of course, although the Drake is tankier and it's slower. But since I'm a cruiser pilot primarily, uh, I like to fly cruisers and I like, I like fast ships, I like speedy ships. 
the the Orthos just lies well within the needs that I need, so uh, that's why I got it. But if you want a ship with similar performance, a bit more tank and a, a lot less speed, then the Drake is actually the cheaper option and you, with the Drake you can also uh, do these sites fairly easily. Unless there is a ship uh, limit, basically uh, ship tonnage limit on the gate that does not allow your Drake to jump, then that's a whole different story, but so far we haven't had an issue with cruisers, we're actually, my apologies, we actually had issues with cruisers. We found a lot of the store sites and a lot of frigate sites, and in these sites you can't really go with a cruiser, so that's why we, we have been flying the stores a lot. And honestly, like I mentioned before, we made a lot of ISK with the stores. It's very enjoyable to fly them. Uh, they're so cheap, and it's ridiculous how much ISK you can find uh, from all these anomalies. You can get so much ISK. We got like 550 million, 780 million, my apologies. 780 million after a 3 or 4 hour roam in high sec with the stores. That is insane and that's basically how I founded my ship and my friend also founded one of, one of his favorite faction ships. So we both have uh, our favorite ships now and now we focus on getting ISK and we will focus on creating Yeet PvP ships and we will also have fun with some other uh, aspects of the game. Okay, the piñata has been blown up and... Let's take a look at what's inside of the wreck. Well, fingers crossed for a good loot drop, although it doesn't happen every day, but you know. And some, yeah, it's it's C-types, but unfortunately only, uh, only C-types. No A-types, and these modules are not that expensive. Yeah, well, one 110 million, but that's far away. Perhaps we can get 110 million if I go sell it in that region over there. And a Shadow Serpentis item. Well, you know, it's. I'm not gonna complain, I had fun, we had fun. And one bad loot drop is definitely not going to uh, affect the enjoyment that we have for the game. Well, um, the Ortus, as you can see, does perform really well. It's a very, a very fun little ship that I honestly uh, really love to fly and uh, definitely looking forward to see with, uh, with what kind of adventures I'll be faced with this ship. Overall, uh, I'll definitely show you a lot more builds as time goes on, as I get better skills and when I get when I can uh, equip better modules. Currently working on getting the tier two missile launchers. I think they will be uh, very useful, and I believe they will work really well on this little boat. So, with that being said, I hope that you had fun. Uh, hope that you enjoyed this little Ordrus ride. There's going to be a lot more. I also plan to fly a lot more ships. And with that being said, if you would like to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, I love you all, fly safe, stay safe, and I will see you next time.